Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be starting my brand new 2023 edition of the Beginner to 2K Guide. I've done two of these series in the past, but it's been a while since I've done a new one and I figured it's the perfect time to do another series like this because a lot of people are coming over from the Xbox edition and you're looking for a lot of fresh content so you can you guys can you know learn the game and kind of you know begin to improve and you know just get better at your own pace uh so what is this what is this series all about basically i've got a fresh account here uh never been played just got the game on it and i'm gonna go ahead and rank it up from the start basically 1000 elo so from a beginner level all the way up to 2k and i'm going to provide educational commentary for every step of the way uh, i will be live streaming the entire series on twitch so you guys can come down here and check it out so you guys can see you know every single game live however i will be only doing uh 10 or 11 episodes going to youtube so 10 or 11 uh, videos and i'm going to do one video for every 100 elo stretch furthermore i'm going to go ahead and play only as much as i need to so i'm not going to play like my full potential versus the 1k elo i will take it very slow and really break it down to you so you guys can understand what level you need to play to be able to consistently win those games as i improve i will start to play a little bit quicker using a little bit more hotkeys and once we get to around 1800 to 2k i will start playing with somewhat more speed and to really bring all the uh, all the things we learned together uh, it's going to be super educational. Hopefully, it's going to help a lot of people out in terms of improving. And yeah, without further ado, let's just hop into the series. And of course, always the first step is to make sure we've got the right mods. I made a video about this uh, called Watch This Video Before You Play Ranked. I'm going to link it in the description below. It has a detailed guide on why you need all these mods, how to fix your in-game settings. But just for right now, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm rocking with. So I'm rocking with these nine mods, and uh, I highly recommend pretty much every single one of them. I'm not gonna go in detail though, so definitely if you want more detail on mods and settings, check out the video in the description below. It's gonna really help you out. And to be honest, I used my own video when I had the new account to make sure I had the right settings. So this is the, the mods I use, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tab through all the settings here as well, so you guys can get a good look at that. Uh, so here are the settings for the interface. You can just pause the screen, or like I said, check out the video in the description. Uh, graphics, and then we have audio. Uh, highly recommend music to zero because it's somewhat distracting and it can prevent you from hearing um, you know, the, the attack sounds, the important ones. Uh, then game, uh, scroll speed as you can see, and then hotkeys. I won't really show the hotkeys, but uh, you know, just try to improve your hotkeys step by step. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the uh, ranked side of things. So we're going to start a fresh account. We've got nothing banned. Uh, how do you want to go about this? So what I recommend, firstly, is to go ahead and ban the three maps that you don't want to be playing. I recommend you guys stick to Arabia as your main map because it's the easiest one to improve on and it's the most popular map. So I'm going to go ahead and favorite that one. And you can just ban any other map that you don't care to play. Um, so for example, I might go ahead and ban Islands because I don't really like to play water maps. I might go ahead and ban African Clearing because it starts with no Town Center. And I might go ahead and ban, let's say, I don't know, Bogland because I'm not really sure what this map looks like. Just to give you an example. And the rest I'll be more than happy to play. Uh, as you can see, it is a fresh account there, so it's never been played on. And I'm going to go ahead and start the series with a fresh rank game, fresh account. And hopefully it's going to be a nice little guide for everyone to... Oh, for hopefully for everyone to improve with and, and to watch and, and everything like that. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in here. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be playing with less hotkeys than usual. All right, so this is going to be game one of the series. I just showed you guys the mods and the settings. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in here. I've got Twitch chat here with me as well. So we're live streaming the entire thing and the highlights will be sent to YouTube. One episode for every 100 ELO. We're starting off with the placements. Of course, you need to play 10 games of placements. And after all 10, I should be placed around 1500. So every placement game should be around 50 ELO worth. Now for civilizations, we're going to be talking about, you know, what kind of civs that you can play. For the purpose of entertaining you guys on the series, I'm going to stick with random because simply can't satisfy everyone uh, who has a different favorite civ, of course. So I'll be playing random to mix it up. However, for you guys, I recommend you stick to like 
from like one to five civilizations and you really master those civilizations because that's going to make it a lot easier to learn the different aspects of the game instead of learning what every civilization does. Let's go ahead and hop right in and for the first couple matches I'm not going to focus too much on build orders or anything crazy like that. I'm simply going to be focused on the absolute basics. And I'm going to get started with the Gajaras. Most important thing to start is to make villagers. After you make villagers you want to go ahead and make houses and this is the most basic way to start off a game of AV2. Now, we want to gather our resources like sheep, and for that reason, we use our scout, in this case, I have a, ca a camel because I'm Gurjaras, to go ahead and scout for our uh, you know, resources that we find around, like sheep. There's going to be some boars later that we can take. I am Gurjaras, so I get two extra berry bushes under my TC, so I'm going to go ahead and pick those up as well. Now, you want to do this when you first get started. Click this to get the score up, and click F11 on your keyboard to get the timer up top. Why is this important? It's important to have the timer because you want to actually have a good template of how fast you're playing and how fast you're getting to the next age. So here we're going to go ahead and do a little loop around our base just to explore what we have around us. And you might be wondering why I'm starting off by taking food. There's four resources of course as I'm sure many of you guys might know, but the most important to start things off is the food because that's what is used to create villagers. And as you can see, I'm really focused on keeping my town center running as much as possible here. It's by far my main priority in Dark Age. The more villages I produce, the faster my resources come in. And I'm just bringing all the food back to my town center to go ahead and develop in the Dark Age. There's really not a whole lot going on. It's all about making villagers and keeping them efficient on the right resources. All right, we're going to go ahead and scout. Ideally, you don't really stop with the scouting. You keep it going here. Um, but of course, it's natural to take your time with the scouting at first. You're not going to do it as quickly as possible. All right, when you have a good amount on food, again, I'm not worried about build orders or exact numbers right now. Once you feel like you have a good amount on food, it's important to start taking some wood. The reason being is that you need two buildings to go up to the next age. As you can see, you need 500 food and two dark age buildings to go up. And so I'm going to go ahead and start taking some wood here. So I use this villager. I'm going to garrison her, take her over here. And I'm going to take a wood line. Lumber camp always goes right next to the trees because we want the trees to be as efficient as possible here. And so we're going to go ahead and put the lumber camp here so that this tree, this tree, this tree all have very little walking distance to the drop off. We'll continue taking food under our town center, of course. And notice my build production is absolutely constant here, 100%. And now we're going to go ahead and continue scouting around. And look at that, we're 13 out of 15 population. This is when we need a house. And this is another reason why we have to take wood early on. So I'm going to go ahead and make a house. Don't really worry about the placement right now. Just worry about getting it down. All right, I found more sheep and this is great. And I'm sending a few bills to wood. Now we don't need that much wood because if you, th if you really think about it here, we just need the 100 wood for the lumber camp. And we also need 100 wood for the mill. Those are the two buildings you're going to make in Dark Age to get you up to Feudal Age. So I need a little bit of wood, but not too much. Once you feel like you have a good amount of wood, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is to basically lure in the boars. This is by far the trickiest thing as a new player. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys exactly how to do it. And it's going to seem quite difficult at first, but hopefully over time, you're going to get a lot better at this. So we're going to send one bill from the town center to go ahead and pull the boar in. And you're going to hit him once. Usually once is enough. Sometimes you do it twice and run him back to the town center. Once you get close, once he gets close, you're going to use the other villagers to attack the boar, and this villager is going to garrison him into the town center. And there you go. Boar is under your town center, the villager is safe, and now you have 340 food to take. And that's huge. Next vill, we need another house, because we're at 18 out of 20 pop. So go ahead and drop another house. And this is the very basics of Dark Age. Throughout all this, we have to find time to scout our opponent. So let's go ahead and try to look for him now. Oh, that is not great. Okay, why is this not good? This villager just ate a sheep outside. Well, first of all, it's not good because he has to walk two tiles to drop off the food. Secondly, if I eat too many animals at once, the animals will decay. And so they lose like one food every second naturally. Uh, and so eating multiple animals at once is not a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in that second boar. And it looks like I found some sheep for my opponent, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Bring in that second boar. Again, can I keep the villas under the town center working as much as possible here? I'm going to go ahead and bring in that boar and continue the build production. Again, garrison him. There we go. And simple as that. All right, now we're going to need to get our second building. Again, you could do this earlier if you want. There's not really anything too strict you got to follow for now. 
Eventually, we'll start talking a little bit more about builders and the most efficient way to allocate your villagers. But for now, we're going to really focus on the essentials and the basics. Like the woodland, we're going to go ahead and make the berry bush very close, or the mill, sorry, very close to the berry bush to make sure our villagers are efficient. Going to keep the production in. And as you can see, I'm getting dangerously close to that 500 food, which is what I need to click up. You might be wondering why I'm not taking gold or stone. You, might, you know, those are valuable resources. Why not take them? You don't need them in Dark Age. They don't, they don't actually do anything in Dark Age because all you need in Dark Age is the 500 food and a little bit of wood to make houses and the buildings to click up to Feudal Age. The reason why we want to click up to Feudal Age as quickly as possible is because Feudal Age allows us to make units uh, like scouts and archers to help gain the map control and start harassing our opponent. Before we click up or earlier, we get Loom. What Loom does is it gives us a little bit of tankiness for our villagers in the form of extra armor and more HP. Now that my you know, the, the food under my town center has completely depleted. I'm going to go ahead and make a second lumber camp to take a little bit more wood. And in the meantime, I can click to feudal age. So here's the idea. I could not make the second lumber camp and send another five villas here, for example. But then I've got too many villagers in the same spot. And when you have too many villas in the same spot, like on the straggler, they tend to bump a lot. Look at these villas bumping on each other as they go back and forth. And they're just not working as efficiently as possible. So by making a second lumber camp, I'm spreading them out as much as possible here, which is a great thing. Naturally, after your natural food sources have finished, you still have some berries. But for the same reason I can't send another five villas to this lumber camp because they're going to bump and be inefficient, I can't send all my villas here to take the, the berry food or the berry bushes because then they're going to be like 10 villas there and they're going to bump like crazy. So instead, what we're going to do is simply start farming. You want to make the farms as close to the town center as possible. This way, they gather the food as efficiently as possible, and you're gonna have no problem with you know efficiency when it comes to a farm uh, having to or a farmer having to walk a long way to drop off that food. Right, 25 out of 25, and it's about time we make a couple houses. At this point, I haven't really talked too much about what your opponent's doing because I really want to focus on what we're doing and how we develop our dark age. A cool little trick as well is as you're going up, you can actually make villas now so that as soon as you get up to next age, the villas are already being made. And in the meantime, I can go ahead and scout my opponent a little bit. I was a little late on the house, so I got housed, and that, there you can see the danger of not making the houses in time. Alright, so starting off in Feudal Age, what's the most important thing to do? You're going to want to go ahead and check out the eco upgrades that you can pick up. So double bid axe costs 100 food and 50 wood and basically says villagers chop wood 20% faster. This is a really good investment. So go ahead and pick that up. If I get this right now, I'm going to have way more wood income throughout the you know stages of the game. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for horse collar here, which gives more food for every farm I build. So with these two, those two economy upgrades picked up, I can go ahead and continue to develop my economy here. I'm not really too worried about what my opponent's doing here because at a very beginner level, you're probably not going to get rushed. However, if you're scared of getting rushed, let's go ahead and make some defensive buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up a barracks here. And a barracks is crucial for every game because it lets you make the other production buildings that you have, like the archery range and the stable, which is what, what's available in Feudal Age. At this point, we can already see my opponent has some military in the form of a, a spearman here. So you have to be somewhat worried about his spearman. And it does look like he's walling up a little bit. Which brings me to another point. We can wall up ourselves if we want to. So if you're scared of enemy units coming up, we can make some small palisade around our base to make it so that he can't enter as quickly as possible. However, we, we can't just use only palisade. We can also use stuff like houses. For example, I can wall up this side using houses. And if you're scared of the scouts, we can go ahead and make a few spearmen, which are naturally good against cavalry. If you guys aren't familiar with the counter system, you can check out some videos on YouTube to help you get more familiar. But there's a lot of counter units in the game. For example, spearmen have an attack bonus versus cavalry units. And so against cavalry, making a few spears is always a good idea. If I wanted to put some pressure on my opponent, I have a few options. Go ahead and click your military building section. You can make an archery range or a stable. It might seem like you don't have that many options in Feudal Age. And that's kind of true, you don't. But you can make a few units to get control of the map and start to pressure your opponent or defend yourself a little bit in this age. Think of Feudal Age like a stepping stone to castle. And as you can see, I'm continuing to make farms around my town center in the most efficient spots possible. I'm not going to make a farm here because I have to walk a long way. But making a farm here is not the worst because the walking distance is pretty small. And you can always make farms around your mill as well. So you can go ahead and make farms like this. And those are going to be very efficient because the mill is also a drop off for food. 
fantastic. And as you can see, the walls are starting to come together and my base is expanding. And as you can see, I can continue to make a few houses here just to continue to wall up my base and that is a pretty good idea. All right, what do I need for castle? So for castle age, I need 800 food, 200 gold, and I also need two buildings. I have one building, which is the stable. I'm gonna go ahead and get the second building now, which you've got two options, or three options really. But first I'm gonna get a mining camp on my gold. And for the mining camp, I personally like to leave one tile space because I put like seven or eight villas on my gold. And because every gold tile has 800 gold, it's actually quite efficient to make a space for the mining camp. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Ooh, we're getting rushed by a few scouts. So if opponent has cavalry, we're gonna make a few spears. But not only that, we're also gonna make a few scouts to go ahead and defend his his rush. We're gonna need a few spears and also a few scouts of our own to go ahead and defend and you know just chase him around our base as well a little bit. I haven't worried about attacking because we're not at the stage where we can really focus on attacking right now. I wanna make sure we're focused on what we're doing at home, which is queuing villagers. Some idle time there was not good for me. All right, I shouldn't go around this side, but I might be open actually. But for the time being, I'm just chasing around. The walls are helping out a little bit. Let's go ahead and take my force now and try to go chase him around. He killed my one spear, so that's kind of problematic. But I'll go ahead and chase him with the next bunch of units. And if you ever worried, you can always wall behind, so he can't really break in. So I just make a house there and I should be fine. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use our spears and our army to defend here. And notice I'm using the patrol uh, or the attack move um, hotkey to fight and that just makes it so when your units enter within range of fighting they're gonna go ahead and take the fight naturally and as you can see it's an absolute cleanup completely destroyed his army and I'm completely safe at home now which is the benefit of making defensive units to defend my economy and make sure I'm flowing smoothly I have a few idle bills things got messy during that so I'm gonna go ahead and always keep your town center running I'm gonna go ahead and make more villagers and you can check your idle bills. Uh, there should be a hotkey somewhere. I'm not even sure where it is. I think it's this one. Yeah, this one. But I use a hotkey so I can do that with my keyboard. As you can see, I'm cycling through the idle bills. Let's go ahead and use those. I'll make a market, which is a building I highly recommend newer players to make. And what you can do is also turn on the auto reseed farm. So that's gonna reseed the farms naturally. Really good for beginners. I don't recommend it for uh, you know competitive play, of course, but that's something we'll talk about later. So go ahead and keep my units defensively for now. If I want to attack, we could, but I'll leave the attacking for a little bit later. As you can see, I'm taking a lot of gold right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and take, or get the gold mining upgrade, which is an investment for the future, meaning more gold will come in later on. Once the market's finished, I'll be able to go up to Castle Age. And you might be wondering why I'm taking gold. It's simply to be able to click up to Castle Age, and gold is really helpful as the game goes on. As you can see, I can click now. Gold lets you make units, it lets you get technologies for your military, and it's a really important resource in general to go ahead and you know field an army with and develop your base past feudal age. It's also really important to make archers in the feudal age itself. Okay, this is somewhat problematic. My opponent is already in castle age, and I've already seen that he's got a few scouts on the field, but let's go ahead and see what he's up to here. So I'm gonna use my scouts to go ahead and attack just to really see what he's gonna be going for. Back home, I can make a few spearmen if I want, but spearmen is not a great unit with the Gurjaras because they don't get access to pikemen. So let's go ahead and figure out a better unit. And you know what? It's a camel civilization. If you're not sure, you can check the tech tree. It tells you it's a cavalry and camel civ. So let's go ahead and get a second stable. And you can already make camel scouts in the feudal age. So go ahead and make a few of those. My plan is to go for a few camels. If I want to put some pressure, I can go ahead and use the scouts to attack some of my opponent's bills, like for example, the Farmville. So I could, oh, he's got no looms. His villagers are very weak. And so I can actually do a little bit of damage to him here and force him to defend his base. All right, I don't really care too much about the scouts. I'm gonna focus more on my economy for now. So I don't need that many more spears because I'm gonna be focusing on camels. We'll go ahead and pick up Bloodlines, which gives mounted units an extra 20 HP, good upgrade to get. And we get a Blacksmith. Blacksmith is the best way to upgrade your military units and it's a generic building that every civilization gets access to. You always want to pick up your blacksmith upgrades because it gives your units more value. For example, if you've got only one camel, if that camel has plus one attack from the blacksmith, it's not a big deal. But if you have 30 camels and they all get plus one attack, all of a sudden that is a massive deal for your army. All right, now that I'm in the castle age and a lot of things are gonna get, you know, get going. Firstly, I'm gonna get access to the Camel Rider, and this is a Sif specific unit, the Shiramsha Rider. I'm not gonna make him too much right now. He's mainly an archer unit counter. I'm gonna make the Camel, which counters cavalry. So if he's on cavalry, the Camel will be very strong at dealing with that. 
The next goal of Castleage is to develop your economy. We can do this by adding town centers. We start the game with 200 stone, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a town center on my wood line to expand my economy, and hmm, maybe another town center out here. Notice I'm not making them too close to my base, but not too far either. I'm not gonna make a town center, you know, over here, or over here on the front gold, because it's a little too exposed. But I'm not gonna make one very close to my base either, because that's gonna make my economy too cramped. Next, we can pick up Wheelbarrow, which is an economy upgrade that is pretty efficient for your farms, then the second wood upgrade and the second farm upgrade. Notice I'm actually prioritizing my economy upgrades because it's a very important thing as the game goes on to have the right upgrades um, because it just makes it that you're gathering more resources. And at first you don't need that many resources to make units, but later on we're gonna wanna make units from like 10 stables. So we're gonna need enough economy to support that. What does it mean to add town centers? You might be thinking it's a bit useless because we already have the first town center. Why do we need another version of the same building? And the reason is simply to double the economy and in this case triple because we made an extra two. I can make villas from both town centers now. And this is important because the more villas you have, the more resources you gather. And so you're essentially tripling your economy when you add the extra two town centers. So it's very important. And you might be wondering as well, why not add four or five town centers? And the reason is simple, you don't have the stone for it, so it's pretty expensive to like mine the stone or buy the stone and make that many town centers. However, if you wanted to, you absolutely can. For example, if I buy 100 stone, I could go ahead and make another town center, and there's literally nothing wrong with that. It just comes down to whether you can afford it. It's kind of like IRL, where you have a good amount of money for yourself, but you can't invest all your money because you need some of your money to make military, or in this case, make military, but in real life for grocery shopping, for your daily expenses, you can't just invest all your money, but you also don't want to hoard all your money. You want to invest some of it to the future. Similarly here, we want to make some of our resources right now to make military, but we also want to invest some of our economy into making town centers and getting uh, resources or more resources in the future. All right, we're gonna go ahead and need some more houses now, so I'll go ahead and do that. And as you can see, I'm gonna select all my town centers using a hotkey and spam villagers. This is the best way to do it because, you know, it's just the easiest way to make sure you have all bills or all the town centers making bills at all times. All right, now that we have a good amount of camels, I say let's go ahead and attack our opponent. As you can see, the score has been relatively close throughout this game. So this is pretty much the level you're gonna be wanting to play around to compete at around 1,000 yellow. Although this might be a little lower than a thousand, around like 800 yellow or something like that. All right, at this point, we're gonna need to just develop our economy and continue to make sure that we're pulling ahead. So again, main priority is to make sure I'm making villages in all my town centers. Select all town center hotkey and spam the vill hotkey. With my army, let's go ahead and see what I can do. My opponent still has no looms. So look, how, look how these villagers die. And as you can see, he's on cavalry and my camels are gonna shred that. And they'd be even stronger if I picked up blacksmith upgrades. So I'll just show you how, how strong those camels really can be, especially with the Gurjaras, they get a nice bonus for them. And then back home, I can get some uh, blacksmith upgrades. So while my camels do a little bit of damage to him, we're gonna go ahead and pick up some blacksmith upgrades. Now it might seem overwhelming, you have five options. Let's go ahead and read through all of them. So foraging gives you infantry and cavalry plus one attack. Okay, he's attacking us with spears, so we'll just run away for the time being. So we have plus one attack for infantry and cavalry from the blacksmith. We'll pick that up. We have cavalry, we want more attack, that's good. This next one is infantry have plus one normal and pierce armor. We're not really making too much infantry, so we're not gonna do that. Next up is cavalry have plus one normal and pierce armor. Let's go ahead and pick that up, because we have cavalry. Now, what is normal and pierce armor? Normal armor is melee armor. When you get hit by melee units, if you have one armor, the unit will do one less attack. So my camel have six attack. If I attack a unit with one armor, I'm doing only five damage. The pierce armor is against archer units. So if an archer has four attack and he attacks you, if you have one pierce armor, the archer would do three damage. So pierce is for ranged, normal armor or melee armor is for melee. And I recognize that my, cam my camera is actually blocking the tips, but I'm reading out all the tips, so you can just follow with my, uh, with my voice. All right, I'm gonna get, go ahead and continue making houses. Notice I'm always making houses because it's just the best way to make sure that you don't get population capped. Because if you get population capped, all your production, all the villages that you're desperately trying to make just completely stop being produced. The military you're trying to make completely gets stopped as well. We'll go ahead and pick up husbandry because this makes our cavalry move faster. Notice I'm getting all the upgrades that resonate with my main unit, which is my camel or my cavalry. I'll go ahead and get the second round of the blacksmith upgrades, so chain barring armor and iron casting. And notice you can just queue them one after the next so you don't have to worry about them. 
All right, at this point, I've got so much wood, and I don't really need wood. I need more food and gold, because I'm making pretty much just camels. So let's go ahead and make farms. I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift, so I can just click areas on the map for my farms, and then my villagers will go ahead and just farm naturally. You go ahead and right-click one, and they're going to go ahead and just finish that one and then continue farming. This is a good way to make farms qu pretty quickly. And another way to do this is to take like eight villagers or seven villas, make a mill, and then do the same thing around it. So you have very efficient farms around a mill. This way I translate my food into, um, sorry, my wood into food, and that's what I need. You can also make farms around your town center, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and make farms around my entire base and continue making villages throughout the time, throughout the time being. Notice I'm not really taking just a few villas and making farms. I'm really making a ton of farms because food is an essential resource. It's used to make fills, it's used to make most upgrades, and it's used to make most military as well. Monthly reminder, Illy. Must love, bro. <laughs> All right, now we're getting close to Imperial Age. We've got 100 villages. Notice we started with three villas, now we're at 100 villas. We have 200 population max, so if we can get to 200 population, we're going to be playing as efficiently as possible, but we can't have only 200 villagers because we need a military. So we need a good amount of villagers and a good amount of military, and so at this point I have a ton of resources, and this is actually really bad to have this many resources sitting there and doing nothing. So you know what, let's try to end the game here, and the way to do that is to make our way to, towards Imperial Age. We need two buildings to go up to Imperial Age, we can go for a university, we can go for a monastery, and we can go for a siege workshop. Normally you just need two out of three of those buildings, or you can go for a castle. But I haven't started mining stone, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Stone is the least important resource in general, because it's only really used to make castles and defensive buildings like stone walls and watchtowers. So you only go to stone if you need buildings like that. However, in the late game, castles are really important. They let you make trebs and you're unique in it. So I highly recommend you go to stone eventually to pick up those castles. When you go to stone is entirely up to you and depending on what you want to do with your game. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click up the Imperial Age and I'm going to go ahead and get Handcart, which is another important economy upgrade. I'll go ahead and get Town Watch, which gives me more vision. So again, any upgrade that helps me out, I'm going to just go ahead and pick it up. Anything I can do to spend my resources is going to be a good idea. I'll go ahead and continue making villas because I'm still not 200 pop, so I might as well just go ahead and make more villas. And now I need more stables. So let's go ahead and make more stables because two stables is not enough. I have so many resources and I don't want to queue like 15 camels in, in both stables because only one gets produced at a time. So I need to go ahead and make a lot of camels or a lot of, sorry, stables to field an army quickly. This makes it so if I lose my army, it's fine because I can remake it really easily. All right, so I'm going to make a ton of stables, and I, I can just go ahead and cancel some of these. And you do that by just go ahead and clicking Control and left-clicking here. It's a good way to cancel stuff. I have all the blacksmith upgrades for cavalry. I don't really need anything else for the time being. And I can continue making villages, of course. Now, what does the university do? I can walk you guys through that. There's a few upgrades. You can go ahead and read through all of them. And they all help for certain specific uh, cases. Right now, I don't really need any of them, to be honest. So I won't really bother with them for the time being. But you can go ahead and read through all of those and determine if you guys need any of them uh, for your own game. And in, in different games, I will pick them up as well. They're pretty important. All right, now I'm spamming. Look at this. Eight stables making camels. And look how fast I'm going to get to 200 pop here. And the reason I want to get to 200 pop is because if I can have a really big army, it's going to be really easy to swarm my opponent and kill him. But here I've got a little bit of an issue. I didn't make enough houses. Classic mistake there. We'll go ahead and make more houses and make sure that doesn't happen. At this point, my wood lines are really inefficient. This is terrible. We're walking like seven tiles. You know what? Let's go ahead and take another wood line. And what we can also do is try to expand using some outposts to get more vision on the side and just completely expand our economy. All right. I'm in Imperial Age now. That gets me access to Heavy Camel. That gives me access to more Blacksmith upgrades, which I'm going to go ahead and pick up. And you know what? Let's use the market. I've got way too much food, way too much wood. I'm going to sell off some of that. And I'm going to use that to buy some stone. Oh, and he's got a massive army. So we can go ahead and fight this. But he's got pikemen here. And pikemen are going to be good against the cavalry. So let's go ahead and see how this plays out. I have a good amount of camels. So I should be doing okay versus the pikes. But let's see how that plays out. Yeah, I had more than him. So I ended up winning the fight here. If it's a problem, I could go ahead and make a counter unit to the pikemen. So what I could do is switch into skirmishers to make sure I've got something to deal with the pikes. But it looks like I won the fight, so it's totally fine. Let's go ahead and make a castle now, and that's going to give me access to trebs. In the meantime, enough wasting time. Let's go ahead and 
kill our opponent because we're getting closer to 200 pop here. Okay, our expansion is going fine. We see some of his units here. Let's go ahead and kill those villagers. Looks like he's expanding a lot as well. And you know what? I see him on a lot of pikemen. Let's get a counter unit out. I'm going to get some barracks, some uh, archer rangers, excuse me. So I'll get seven archer rangers. And in the meantime, I'm going to use my camels to go ahead and destroy his base. Okay, 24 camels versus 8 pikemen. Even though pikemen get an attack bo bonus versus camels, I have so many more military units here that I will definitely just win this fight. So I'll go ahead and take that fight. And I don't really need to watch it because I know I'm going to win it. Oh, he's coming at me here, but let's get my castle up. And I'll just go ahead and defend that one pretty easily. So that castle should be keeping me quite safe. Now I'm going to go for range units. This is when I need fletching, which gives me plus one attack, plus one range on all archer units. And archer armor, which gives me plus one normal and pierce armor for my archer units. He's attacking my castle. Let's go ahead and garrison my villagers. And what I could do from the university now is pick up murder holes, which will kill his units under my castle. The castle doesn't shoot under its, under its base naturally. You need to get murder holes for that. And meanwhile, I'm just destroying his economy with my camels. So we're going to go ahead and continue doing that. You can always garrison your villagers, so you can use this hotkey, garrison your villagers, and your town center will actually shoot arrows as well. So, as you can see, the town centers are not just an economy building, but it's also a building that helps you defend your base. There you go. And I can also get ballistics and chemistry. These upgrades help with range units. Uh, ballistics makes it so you can hit moving targets easily, and chemistry gives you plus one attack for all your range units and buildings. I'm attacking his economy quite a lot with my camels, and now I'm not really happy with my situation. I'm not, I'm not 200 pop. I need to get to 200 pop, so let's go ahead and make sure I can do that. I'm also running low on gold, so I need to get more gold access. And that's part of the reason why we want to expand to find more gold. I have some gold here that I can use as well. And I can also make more bills, so let's go ahead and do that, because I want to get to 200 pop as quickly as possible. At this point, I recommend your composition to be, and I've said this all the time, one food unit, one gold unit, and one siege unit. So my food unit is going to be the skirmisher, it only costs food and wood. My gold unit is going to be the camel, which is doing a lot of good work. It kills all his cavalry and it's good against his economy. And then my siege unit is going to be the trebuchet, which is just going to be a long range siege unit used to kill his castles, which indeed he's got a castle here. So I'll continue upgrading my skirms as you can see from the blacksmith. And it's got a lot of ranges. Notice I'm not making just two ranges, I'm making like 10 ranges because I can afford it. So I might as well just pick it up. I got some idle villagers, make sure we keep those used, used, there we go. And the perfect situation that you want to aim for in every single one of your games is to get to 200 population with zero idle vills and a healthy economy with a proper military composition. All right, he's trying to attack me here, but I've got my skirmishers here. Let's, hold on, let's pick up elite skirm. I forgot about that upgrade. You can also pick up thumb ring, helps him a little bit. And Skirmishers having a little attack bonus versus the Pikemen, so it's going to be a pretty good answer to his Pikes. It's not the only unit you can make to counter Pikemen, you can also make Hankin Anir, you can also make Arbalest, it just depends on what your, your civilization has. And so now he's on pure Pikemen, so I can always go ahead and patrol the Skirms, and use the Skirms to deal with his units. And I don't really want to fight with the Camels, so let's just run back with the Camels and let the Skirms do the job. He's up to Imperial Age, but I'm not really worried about that because I've got the perfect comp to deal with him. And we'll pick up Bracer now, so all the... Uh, all the blacksmith upgrades for my units, and we're just going to go ahead and fight in here. Notice I'm fighting under my castle, I've got a ton of counter units out in the field, and notice he's got some skirms now, but I've got the camels to deal with those, so my composition is working really nicely, and finally I've hit 200 pop, but I've got some idle vills, ooh, he's building a castle here, I'm not going to let that happen, let's go kill those vills, and you know what, I'll make my own castle on this side, to defend this whole area. Hopefully I can stop that castle in time, and I've got some trebs out. We can go ahead and pick up Conscription, which gives me more uh, production for the military. And let's go ahead and use my camels now to take out those vills. Beautiful stuff. Let's go ahead now and get some more castles around as well. And the game is over. GG. So once you get the 200 pop, as you can see, it's really easy to win the game because you have the perfect composition. We've completely destroyed his base with our camels. And we've got the skirmishers to deal with this halberdier. So notice that with the composition, with the right units, we're going to go ahead and easily take out our opponent's army and take out our opponent's base. So this is a very, very basic introduction to Age of Empires. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully I broke down the concepts in a, a very easy to understand way. 
For the next episodes of the series, I'm going to be playing a little bit quicker, using a little bit more hotkeys, but it's not going to jump from zero to 100% right away. I'm going to slowly and slowly use uh, more, you know, more hotkeys, more buildings. We can go ahead and get, we can go ahead and get a hello YouTube in the chat, just to let YouTube know that we're live streaming the series on Twitch. And I got 48 points for that one, so I'm at 1,048. I'm feeling good. I'm gonna go tell my mom that I won my first game because I was watching Harris Guide, and so this is a great situation to be in. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and check out some of the military stats here. We killed a lot of his stuff. And look at the economy. The thing I really focused this game, I wasn't attacking him early. I wasn't focused on destroying my opponent. I was focused on developing my economy. And look at that. I've got double the food, a little bit more wood, a little bit more stone, a little bit more gold. Things are looking healthy for me. And that is the important part about all those investments, all those economy upgrades I got, making the villagers, making sure they're efficient on farms, on wood, on gold, etc. And it just translated into having a much better economy. And as you can see, he might have stopped making bills. I continued making bills until I was close to 200 pop. And that's going to do it for episode one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And if you have any feedback, definitely let me know in the comments so I can work on this and make better uh, videos in the future, especially for this series. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.